friends welcome to the 15th lecture in module 2. In the previous lectures we discussed about different numerical methods to compute the natural frequency and mode shape of a multi degree freedom system. We have also shown you the comparison of the results and we realize that the values are tallying and they are in good agreement. In this lecture we will explain you how a computer code is being written to estimate the natural frequency and mode shape. We will again compare the results of a specific problem what we did in the last lecture by hand compare the results with computer codes then we will see that they are again in better agreements. So, we will take discuss about the frequency and mode shape of multi degree freedom system model. We will take an example problem the problem demands to obtain all mode shapes and the corresponding frequency of a system shown. The system has got 3 stiffnesses k, k, k and m which are equal. I am now marking the degrees of freedom this is my x 1 this is my x 2 this is my x 3 I can say even x 1 of t x 2 of t and x 3 of t. So, one can very clearly see here m 1 equals m 2 equals m 3 is simply m may be some numeric value similarly k 1 k 2 and k 3 or taken as k some numeric value. This problem we solved in the last lecture by hand compared the results <coughs> by different methods <coughs> we found them that they are in good agreement. So, easily when the degrees of freedom are marked at the point where mass is lumped the mass matrix will be the diagonally dominant matrix whereas, off diagonal elements will all be 0 which we already know and there is no confusion in writing the mass matrix readily. To write the stiffness matrix we need to <coughs> formulate the equation of motion which we already said by Newton's method. Let us try to do that quickly for this specific problem let us compare this and see how we are able to get the stiffness matrix. So, the system what we have is m, m and m k, k and k this is x 1, x 2 and x 3. So, we want a free body diagram let us say give unit displacement this is going to be k times of x 1 <coughs> and when this spring will now oppose k times of x 1 minus x 2 and we are giving unit displacement in the degree of freedom x 1. Similarly, for the second degree we give unit displacement along x 2 and this spring will try to oppose the movement which will be k of x 2 minus x 1 and this spring will now again oppose the movement of k 1 k of x 2 minus x 3 and we have <coughs> the third degree this is also m m and m. So, this is again x 3. So, this spring will try to oppose the movement which is x 3 minus x 2. Let us write the force balance equation for the first case. So, force is equal to m a. So, m x 1 double dot x 1 double dot should be equal to minus of k x 1 minus k x 1 minus x 2 
which I simplify as minus k x 1 minus k x 1 plus k x 2 which is minus 2 k x 1 plus k x 2. So, m x 1 double dot plus 2 k x 1 minus k x 2 is 0 that is my first equation of motion. Now, for the second degree similarly m x 2 double dot will be equal to minus k of x 2 minus x 1 minus k of x 2 minus x 3 which will be minus k x 2 plus k x 1 minus k x 2 plus k x 3 which is a k x 1 minus 2 k x 2 plus k x 3 that is m x 2 double dot. So, I can say m x 2 double dot minus k x 1 plus 2 k x 2 minus k x 3 is 0. That is my second equation of motion. Let us say the third equation which I write here m x 3 double dot is minus k x 3 minus x 2. So, m x 3 double dot is minus k x 3 plus k x 2. So, m x 3 double dot minus k x 2 plus k x 3 is 0 that is my third equation. Now, writing all these equations in a simultaneous form let us say m x 1 double dot plus 2 k x 1 minus k x 2 is 0 m x 2 double dot minus k x 1 plus 2 k x 2 minus k x 3 is 0 m x 3 double dot minus k x 2 plus k x 3 is 0. I can now convert these equations into a matrix form. I can now say this can be expressed as m times of 1 0 0 0 1 0 0 0 1 of x 1 double dot x 2 double dot x 3 double dot plus k times of 2 minus 1 0 minus 1 2 minus 1 0 minus 1 1 of x 1 x 2 x 3 is 0. So, this is my mass matrix and this is my stiffness matrix. So, if you look at the file what we just now showed to you. the mass matrix and the stiffness matrix are exactly in the same style. So, k times of k times of or m times of 1 0 0 0 1 0 0 0 1 and k times of 2 minus 1 0 minus 1 2 minus 1 0 minus 1 1. So, getting a k matrix as an input to the program is not difficult. We can write equations of motion getting mass matrix and stiffness matrix as an input for a given program is not a problem. Having said this let us try to write the program by 4 methods Eigen solver, Dunkerley, influence coefficient, Stored law and Rayleigh rates. Let us take the Eigen solver method. The coding is available on the screen now the hatch box shows you the input file actually the inputs are given in multiple formats. The first input refers to the degree of freedom, second line of the input refers to the mass matrix value in kg. You have got to give the value with a space bar and separate each row 
by a semicolon. The third line of the program input is for stiffness, the units are in Newton per meter. Similarly, you have to enter rho wise, the stiffness matrix what we just now saw is 2 minus 1 0, this is the first row. So, you can see here 2 minus 1 0 with a spare bars in between and a semicolon separating the lines, open with the bracket and close with the bracket. So, you can enter the input file as degree of freedom of your choice, mass matrix of your choice and k matrix of your choice. Once you do this, the program is now going to evaluate the eigenvalue and eigenvector for this problem. Okay. So, it calculates the stiffness matrix, it prints the stiffness matrix, then it computes the eigenvalues and eigenvectors, it also estimates the modal matrix. This method gives all frequencies and mode shapes. The mode shapes are combined in a modal matrix is written here. So, in a modal matrix of 3 by 3 because it is a 3 degree freedom system model, each column will refer to a each vector. So, this is phi 1, this column will be phi 2 and this column will be phi 3. Together this matrix is called phi matrix or modal matrix. Then orthogonality condition is also checked for this given problem and if the modes are not orthogonal, the modes are made orthogonal and one can find out that. So, now normalization is being done and we get ultimately the normalized modal matrix with respect to mass. You can normalize the matrix modal matrix either with respect to mass or with respect to stiffness. So, in this case it is normalized with respect to mass. So, the last section of the code actually gives you the mode shape plot also. You can see here the mode shape plot is being given in this section. It even plots the mode shape and this is a sample input, mass matrix has been given, stiffness matrix has been printed and it calculates all the three frequencies. It calculates the corresponding omega 1, this is phi 1, omega 2, this is phi 2 and omega 3 this is phi 3, you can see here phi 1 does not have any 0 crossing, phi 2 has 1 0 crossing and phi 3 has 2 0 crossings. So, this is the first mode shape, second mode shape and third mode shape. These modes are naturally not orthogonal, they are now normalized and you get the normalized mode shape like this. They are also plotted, the blue one, the blue one shows mode 1 the green one shows mode 2 and the red one of course, shows the mode 3. So, this has been obtained with a sample program which has been given to you on the screen. I will also give you the complete coding at the end of this presentation. Let us move further, let us take a Dunkerley's method. Dunkerley method is a shortcut method which again requests you to give the input as degree of freedom mass and stiffness. Then it calculates the influence coefficient matrix by inverting by inverting the stiffness matrix, inverse the standard subroutine in MATLAB. So, once k matrix is, is designated you can invert the matrix to get influence coefficient. So, friends please remember influence coefficient matrix is nothing but the flexibility matrix. Okay. So, inverse so influence coefficient matrix is obtained, once you have this coding with you then it estimates only the fundamental frequency with of course, a high degree of approximation. Let us see the sample input. So, the sample input for the mass and stiffness is same, this becomes my flexibility matrix now which otherwise I call as influence coefficient matrix and based on the Dunkerley's algorithm which says. 1 by omega square is actually sum of m i alpha i i, it calculates omega 1, it gives you only the fundamental frequency with a serious level of approximation. 
okay, the value what you obtained is 0 0.408 in the previous case the value what we obtained is 0.445 for the first mode shape and frequency. So, there is an approximation. <laughs>